Hello grade tens and welcome back to another video with me Miss Martins. In today's video we'll be looking at some financial maths exam past paper questions. This will be part one. I'll link the paper below if you want to do it with me. Pause the screen and answer the questions or mark it as we go along. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you're not an official part of my Miss Martins classroom yet. Let's jump right into these questions. My first question is an exchange rate question. You can always expect an exchange rate question. In this question, they are giving me the pound to rand exchange rate. That's the exchange rate as given. And they say that Zola traveled to the United Kingdom to watch some WWE wrestling matches. And the total cost needed for the trip was 3,569 pounds we need that amount in rands we know that one pound is 18,18 rand that means that this many pounds to get it to rands i'll need to multiply by 18.18 if you struggle with exchange rates remember you can always do it like this you write the two currencies next to each other underneath that you write the exchange rate as given so one pound to 18.18 rand then we are given pounds and we want rands so under pounds we write three five six nine we're looking for this amount over here and as i've mentioned before we always divide on the side and then we multiply on the top so if i were to write that in my calculator it would be three five six nine divide on the side divided by one times on the top times by 18.18 so essentially we are multiplying that number by that number and the reason i like this is because divide on side they rhyme and then times on top we've got some alliteration over there so our answer should be and there's my answer my next question is a higher purchase question now remember higher purchase is a short-term loan and the interest paid on this loan is simple interest. So we need to use our simple interest formulae. Now remember with a higher purchase agreement, usually a deposit is paid. So usually we have to work up that deposit first and take it off of the selling price of the car. Or in this case, it's a car um, and it's the thing that we're purchasing. We have to take the deposit away first. So my first question, let's read it. It says, Sipo bought a brand new Ford Ranger in April 2015 on higher purchase at a cost of 3 379,000 Rand. He agreed on paying 15% deposit. Remember that comes off first and then took out a loan on the balance. So the balance is the leftover amount and they give me the interest rate. Remember it's simple interest. So first question, how much deposit must he pay? Deposit is a percentage of the total amount. So it's 15% deposit. So essentially it is 15% of your total like that. And then you can work it out as so that is the amount required for him to pay on the day before he can drive away in his car and the leftover, the balance, will be paid over a period of time. They say, hence, calculate the initial value of the loan. Remember, the loan, again, is the leftover amount after you remove the balance. So you take the initial price that the car cost minus what we just paid for my deposit and what we get, that is the balance, that is the value of the loan 322150. My next question says calculate the value of the loan with interest in April 2019. So remember, we are purchasing in April 2015. From April 2015 to April 2019, if you count, that is four years. It's a four year period. This is when I need to use my simple interest formula. Now, remember, P is your starting amount. And when we deal with high, higher purchase, P is always the balance after I get rid of the deposits. This is the number one. I is the interest rate. Now, remember, because it's an interest rate, it's a percentage. We need to divide it by 100. So it's your percentage. But in this case, it's 22.5 over here, an interest rate. We're going to have to divide it by 100 to get it into its percentage form. And N is the time period in years. It's the number of years. So in our question, it's four. And if I put it in this formula, it gives me A. Now, A, remember, is the accumulated amount. It's the final amount, including your interest after the number of years that you specify in the formula. So let's substitute into my formula. 
There we go. And our final answer is 612085. Another way, of course, that you can do this question is you can use the following formula. SI equals P times I times N. Now, remember, this formula just gets me the amount of interest. Whereas the one on the left hand side gives me A, the final amount, including interest. So it's basically your starting amount plus whatever interest was occurred, accrued on the amount. If you want to use this formula, you start with P as normal. After you take your deposit off, once again, times it by your interest rate. Remember to divide that by 100 times by your number of years. And what you get over here is 289935. But remember, this isn't your final amount. This is just the amount of interest. Therefore, the value of the loan with interest will be what the loan started out as plus the amount of interest that, again, accumulated over time. And when we add those together, we get the same final amount that we got over here. Whichever formula you use, it doesn't matter. Just write it out properly, substitute. Remember to show all your steps like this. My next question, once the monthly installment, so how much money I'm going to pay off every month, if he paid the loan after the four-year period. So to calculate the monthly installments, remember you take your A value, your final value including interest, divided by the number of months. So in our case, we've got our A value, our answer from the previous question, and it's four years, which equals 48 months. Remember, there's 12 months in one year, so you times it by 12. So it is divided by 48 and therefore our monthly installments, 12751,77. My next question says a sum of money was invested six years ago. So N is six, earning interest at a rate of 6,7% per annum compounded annually. Now, very important, as soon as you see compounded, compounded, you know, you're not going to use simple interest anymore. We're going to be using our compound interest formula, different formula. Just take note that some textbooks use R instead of I, but it is the interest rate. And remember, again, we'll need to divide that by 100 because it's a percentage. The investment is currently worth 96,714,02 rand. When they say currently worth, clearly that's not the amount that we started with. It's not P. It's A. It is after a certain amount of years. It's after six years. This is the value over here. So that is my A value. They then say calculate how much was originally invested six years ago. So what did we start with? What was the principal amount? What is P? So we substitute everything correctly into my formula. And remember, we are looking for P. We are looking to isolate that variable. We're, we're solving for P. Now, to get P alone, P is being multiplied by this entire bracket. So to get P alone, we need to divide the left-hand side by this entire bracket. So we'll type it into our calculator like that. And we get a final answer of 65539,47 if we round off to two decimals. I hope that this was a helpful past paper question. Please look at the links in the description box for more. And I can't wait to see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.